Uh, David Griscom, did you miss doing your gem segment last week? I did. I had to do it for myself in my mirror. Yeah. It was not a, Are you trying to corral exciting. friends? <laughs> were you like, wait, 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 wait? And you were putting the music I was just yelling on your outside, iPhone? I was yelling outside of my apartment window at people on the street. <laughs> 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 These goddamn tariffs. Um, All right. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Griscom Economic Minute. David Griscom. So last week, uh, there was a big announcement from Trump, uh, you know, unexpected one as is typical, that he is going to be putting new tariffs on Mexico, um, which is very significant given our close uh, trading relationships with Mexico. And also the fact that this was something that was supposed to be put to bed. You know, there have been recently been some sort of trade disputes between the United States and Mexico, which included some tariffs on uh, U.S. imports uh, of Mexican goods. And also Mexico uh, came back with their own tariffs. But these new tariffs, um, which are going to begin on June 10th, a 5% tariff on all goods from Mexico, and that will continue to rise until 25% in October unless Trump's demands are met. Um, his demand is to basically force a sovereign nation to participate in his war against the migration. So he wants, he's demanding basically that Mexico um, one takes in a majority of people in Central America who have left their homes because of massive like economic deprivations in their own country and for him to militarize his southern border. Um, so this is obviously a significant move uh, because of how close the United States and Mexico are economically. Uh, Mexico has said they are looking at ways to retaliate. They could possibly consult the World Trade Organization. This is a very lengthy process. Um, and they have also threatened to enact their own tariffs. You know, and again, you know, this just followed a massive cooling between the United States and Mexico after the last kind of trade spat, and it came out of nowhere. Uh, so this initial 5% tariff is definitely going to happen. It's pretty much unavoidable. It could be offset by a continued drop in the, current, in the, in the value of the Mexican peso, which has already dropped 3% since last week when Trump announced it. So it virtually almost undercuts the tariff in itself, or at least for on the Mexican side. Um, you know, and don't forget the background of this, too, is that uh, this is in the background of a massive trade war with China, which has no signs of having any kind of um, finale anytime soon. You know, this is a, that's a $730 billion relationship. And this has really created a lot of volatility on the U.S. markets internationally. I mean, a lot of people are very worried, uh, not only because they see signs of a slowdown within the United States, but also this kind of volatility in the way that we're interacting with our ma massive uh, trading partners. And let's not forget what's going on with these, Trump, uh, with these Trump tariffs, because it's not economically beneficial for the United States to be doing this. Uh, we're seeing already a lot of uh, massive impacts from what's going on with China. And there's two things that have basically been going on. One, Trump is trying to assert his dominance over another neighboring power, and that's what's going on with Mexico. That's significant and something that we really should be clear about. This is an attempt at you know economic war to try to control the policy of another state. And then in China, what we're seeing is that Trump is trying to revoke a deal that has been made, a dirty deal, don't get me wrong, but a deal between the United States capitalists and the Chinese government, which is that the United States would have access to really cheap uh, ununionized, uh, you know, worse off working conditions, labor in China in uh, exchange for one, Chinese access to technologies, two, access to investment, and three, the, access to jobs. That's the foundation of what they call the G2 relationship. Yeah, and so what's going on now? So China's rising power, and now they're trying to find a way to pull out of that, that deal to make sure that China doesn't have access um, to all of the things that they were supposed to get from this deal. And you know, the th biggest thing about this change with Mexico is that, you know, manufacturing in the United States has really been hit because we lose a lot of access to the raw goods that we need. Um, you had uh, manufacturing in the United States is still 11% of the economy. And in the past few months, we've seen a real significant decline in manufacturing growth. And that's because of the uncertainty in the economy that is also just made much worse for, for people by the uncertainty that's going on with the trade deals. Um, I mean, it's absolutely, you know, something that is significant and that we need to be watching. And finally, when you see what's going on, a lot of companies moved from China to Mexico just in the past year because they were worried about U.S. tariffs on China. 
And now they're in Mexico, and now they're facing the possibility of more tariffs. And obviously, the United States is a massive economy, and we're not going to get into a place where other countries aren't going to want to trade with us. But you will start to see more and more that companies that can avoid dealing with the United States are probably going to avoid it in a situation where you just have, uh, you know, a president who's just going to be able to willy-nilly slap on tariffs, which massively mess up supply chains and economic relationships across the gl globe, including, uh, you know, and these companies might even accept higher prices from other countries because they just don't want to deal with the uncertainty of trading with the United States, which is a wild thing to think about. There you have it. <laughs> so much winning. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS, or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.